Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is November 23rd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. And happy Thanksgiving. Now for this segment, what I'm going to be talking about is what is, in my opinion, the most important news of the day. And the most important news of the day is not the fact that it is Black Friday, not the fact that there are millions of Americans out there bargain hunting and shopping for their Christmas presents or, or just bargains for themselves. Uh, not the fact that it's Thanksgiving or, or just that Thanksgiving has ended, uh, given, despite the fact that this is an, a very important national holiday in which we reflect on the things that we are thankful for and the reasons why we have been so fortunate over the years. In my opinion today, is, what the most important news of today is the fact that a new iteration of the National Climate Assessment will be released today. This is a, a very important report on the state of the world's climate, a climate situation that is rapidly deteriorating and in which many of us and more of us find ourselves more and more at risk due to extreme weather events that are spurred by changes in the Earth's climate, primarily a warming and overall systemic warming of the Earth's climate, which is producing a number of knock-on extreme effects that unfortunately is putting more and more of us at risk of loss of property and loss of life. Recently today, um, Dr. Michael Mann uh, spoke both on MSNBC and CNN, and these are, in my opinion, very important interviews. It's it's unfortunately seldom that we see high uh, high ranking climate scientists, climate scientists uh, of 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 high level knowledge and renown reporting on the issue of climate change on the national news media. And so, when we do see speakers like Dr. Mann on major media sources and speaking on matters of, of of essential importance to all of us. I like to highlight it, so I'm, I'm going to add these links. But Dr. Michael Mann spoke on both CNN and MSNBC today on the issue of the National Climate Assessment Report that is coming out today, as well as on recent extreme events such as the campfire in California. And I'm going to go a bit more into the details of the campfire and how that's related to climate change later in this segment. But I'd just like to point out that, that Dr. Mann spoke on MSNBC and CNN today. And if you have not yet seen his statements, I encourage you to follow the links that I provide and listen to what he has to say. So just on the news of today, uh, according to news reports, the U.S. government is releasing a major report on climate change on Friday. This, this release today has met with some controversy with the Trump administration, which is well known for denying or downplaying the impacts of human-caused climate change, um, trying to bury the report on a day when Americans are not focused on the news. This will be volume two of, of what is, in my opinion, an essential government assessment on climate change that not only looks at the longer term trends with regards to global warming, primarily driven by fossil fuel burning, but also looks at the increasing links to ex the extreme events that we are seeing proliferating around the globe and in the US and the overall warming of the Earth's atmosphere, as well as regional effects and hemispheric effects, some of these of which I, I'm, I'm going to discuss a bit more. Now, one of the impacts of human-caused climate change is that, and, and human-caused climate change has many impacts, but one of the impacts that is, is showing up in the news quite a lot recently is the fact that we are seeing a proliferation of very large wildfires in the U.S. West and in, in Canada and, and in, in, in uh, northern latitude regions of the northern hemisphere large wildfires that are unfortunately increasingly threatening cities and towns in developed areas 
threatening loss of property and loss of life. And one of the more recent fire disasters that we saw was the Fort McMurray fire, which forced the emptying of, of a city of over 100,000 people in Canada back in 2016. And, and these, this event was, in my opinion, a, a harbinger uh, of the kind of extreme fire events that, that we would tend to see from climate change as the earth continues to warm. Now it's worth noting that even with the present warming of around one to 1.2 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages, we are seeing a proliferation of large fires in certain regions. And this pro proliferation is in large part driven by human caused climate change. Uh, it's not driven primarily by forest mismanagement. And the reason why we know that is that large fires are proliferating throughout many regions of the world that have many different forest management uh, techniques. And we also know that climate change is a, a primary driver of these fires because we have seen, for example, in California, droughts extending for around 360 weeks so far. And in many regions of the West, we see droughts. Now droughts are an enabler of climate change because it produ the droughts produce more fuels for fires by drying out forests and, and enhancing the potential of wildfires when you do have ignition sources. And unfortunately, it's almost impossible to complete, completely remove ignition sources. So when you have increased heat and drought, the frequency of wildfire and the, the intensity of wildfires tend to increase. And, and climate change is driving incre both increasing temperatures and increasing drought regimes across the U.S. West. Now, looking in particular at the campfire of 2018, this, this is one of the worst wildfires ever to occur in U.S. history. It is the deadliest wildfire to occur in the United States since the Cloquet Fire of 1918, as well as the sixth deadliest U.S. wildfire overall. And it's the most deadly and most destructive wildfire in California history in total. Now, the blaze itself began on November 8th, and I'm, I'm going to look a bit at the weather and climate conditions of November 8th to give you guys a snapshot of of the, the conditions on the ground that helped to fuel this fire, as well as the longer term conditions that have helped to increase the intensity of the fire regime and lengthen the wildfire season in California over recent years. Now, this fire started on November 8th and so far in total has resulted in over the, the, the tragic loss of over 84 lives, the injury of 12 civilians and five firefighters, in a blaze that covered 153,336 acres and destroyed 17,148 structures, many of them single family homes and apartment buildings, essentially destroying the, the town of, of Paradise and the community, community of Concal in its entirety. So this, this fire essentially destroyed a, a small city. And we've really never seen an instance like this in the modern age. And, and, it's, and we, it, we would be amazingly uh, irresponsible if we did not talk about how climate change is increasing the risk of these kinds of fires. Now, I just want to look, take a look at the satellite shot of this fire before I go into some of the details. And this is, this is a satellite shot of, of the initiation of the campfire, which resulted in, in so much tragic loss, which, which has still resulted in the displacement of, of tens of thousands of people, many of which are now living in tent cities and are now reliant upon our charity and goodwill because they have, they have essentially lost everything. And unfortunately, with human-caused climate change, you see a pro proliferation of these kinds of instances where people are displaced because of extreme events, and, and the, the proper response is, is not to point the finger of blame at any one set of individuals or, or set of people. It is to help them, and, and these people are 
you know, not living in poor communities. Uh, I think one of the misnomers about climate change is, is climate change primarily impacts poor communities. The thing is, as, as the intensity of extreme events increases, climate change threatens us all. And, and we're all in the same boat. We're, we're all in, in the same boat, which is, uh, I guess, I guess metaphorically, you could say spaceship Earth. And, and, and we are changing the environment of spaceship Earth in such a way that, that we have we are, we are slowly, steadily weaponizing the climate system, system against us, against ourselves, by continuing to burn fossil fuels and to dump such high volumes of carbon into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, what were the base conditions of the campfire? What were the climate change related conditions that contributed to, to the intensity of this blaze and to the initiation of this fire at a time when typically the, the wet season would have already begun to, to bring rains to this region of Northern California in which the campfire occurred. Now, the first condition that I'd like to talk about is the fact that California is now entering its 360th week of drought. So according to the US Drought Monitor, which started in the year 2000. Since 2000, California is currencing, currently experiencing, experiencing the longest duration of drought in its history, which as of November 13th, 2018, has lasted for 360 weeks. So technically now we're in the 361st week of drought for California. And this drought began in December of 20, December 27th, of 2011 and has continued on into the present day. The drought has swelled and ebbed and intensified in the end and, and receded a bit, but the, the fact that this, this drought is just ongoing is, is another indicator that, that climate change effects and impacts are happening now. Now, one of the things that people ask me or, or talk to me about, and they say, Rob, well, the situation is getting pretty bad. And, and my response is that this is the early easy stuff. If you keep, if we keep burning fossil fuels and if we keep dumping carbon into the Earth's atmosphere, this situation just keeps getting worse and worse in, in a ratcheting kind of effect. So, so for to to establish a football metaphor, we're we're in the pregame season of of human caused climate change. We're starting to see the effects. We're starting to see bad effects. We're starting to see. Uh, terrible impacts, but but this is the early stuff. This is this is the easier stuff, and and this should serve as a warning that we really do need to get our act together and listen to climate scientists like Dr. Michael Mann, who today said that that we can prevent the worst impacts of human caused climate change, and, and we have a, sh a small window for for doing that, and we really need to all work together at this time, but because we are all on the you know in the same boat on this issue. We are, we are all at risk. So looking at more climatological cues with regards to the campfire, I'd just like to point out that average temperatures for November in the region of Paradise, California are about 60 degrees, uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the day of the, camp, the, the campfire initiated, not only did we see strong Santa Ana winds and dry conditions, which are trigger, tend to, tend to help set the stage for wildfire development. We also saw very warm temperatures in the region of Paradise, California. In, in this Earth Knoll School map, which is a, is a GFS model-based assessment of the day, uh, temperatures ranging up to the upper 70s, so around 76 degrees Fahrenheit in the snapshot, which is about 16 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for, for the day on which the Paradise Fire initiated. Now, warmer than normal temperatures are a signature of human-caused climate change, and climate change does load the dice for, for much hotter than normal conditions. So, so the, the warmer than normal and drier than normal conditions that we see out west 
are on a percentage basis being influenced greatly by human-caused climate change. Human-caused climate change loads the dice for these extremely long drought situations that we are seeing, and the much warmer than normal temperatures that we have been seeing across the U.S. West. Now, in particular, the U.S. West appears to be more vulnerable to, to warmer than normal temperatures and increasing droughts and wildfires. And, and one of the reasons for that is, is a set of of, of climate change impacts called polar amplification, which appears to be impacting the jet stream and in such a way that ridge patterns and, and heat wave patterns tend to prevail across the U.S. West, even as we tend to see stormier conditions and some and influxes of, of colder Arctic air as, as, as the trough zone moves into the east. And so if you're in the east right now and you're experiencing cooler than normal conditions and you're thinking that, oh, well, you know, climate change isn't happening because, because it's cooler here, that, that's not true. On a global basis, the globe is warming. And, and what we are seeing right now in the northern hemisphere is an influence on the jet stream, which appears to be increasing weather events at both ends of the extreme. Now, there's the, the science is still a little unclear with regards to those impacts and, and nailing down the particular specifics, but the trend of scientific research is, is pointing to more and more evidence that polar am amplification is having this effect, this effect of increasing the prevalence of droughts in the West and fires in the West and increasing the prevalence of stormy conditions and somewhat cooler conditions in the east. Now, moving back to wildfires, I, I know I have talked a bit about the Union of Concerned Scientists report on the issue of Western wildfires increasing in frequency, in large part driven by human-caused climate change. And how much have Western wildfires increased in frequency over recent years? Well, in the 1980s, the average number of large wild, wildfires per year, and these are wildfires larger than 1,000 acres, during any given year across the U.S. West was approximately 140. During the 2000 to 2012 period, the, the number of large wildfires across the U.S. West had doubled, nearly doubled to 250. And in the, in the present decade, we are, we are also seeing an increase even above the, the frequency, the high frequency that was seen during 2000 and 2012. In addition, the average length of wildfire season for the entire U.S. West has increased from five months to seven months. And in California, one of the impacts of that increase in wildfire season is the fact that rainy season has been knocked back a, you know, a, a number of weeks and, and in some cases as long as a month in the fall. So, so the longer you have a dry season the, the, and a warm season, the longer you're going to have prevailing conditions for, for wildfires. And, and that's what we saw in the case of the campfire. Now, climate change is, is driving up temperature, increasing drought prevalence, melting snowpacks, which help to tamp down wild, wildfire potential in the U.S. West. And, and all of these factors that it in, both increase wildfire risk and they are related to human-caused climate change. Unfortunately, if you keep burning fossil fuels and dumping carbon into the atmosphere, not only do you see the increased wildfire risk that we already have across the U.S. West, but the, in, the, the risks continue to increase and they increase substantially according to this Union of Concerned Scientists report. And with just an additional 1.8 degree Fahrenheit of temperature increase above that which has already been seen, some areas of the U.S. West, well, the, the area of the U.S. West in which the, camp, uh, the campfire occurred sees an increasing frequency of wildfires on top of the increase that we've already seen by another 400%. So... So this is what I mean when I say we're, we're kind of in the pregame now. Even with a relatively moderate incre additional increase in, in global temperature from the standpoint of, of climate change scenarios, you can end up with a much, much worse wildfire regime for the U.S. West. Now, I did talk about the prevalence of, of increasing heat and drought across the U.S. West. And, and you can see this in the global temperature anomaly map on many days. And, and, and if, you, if you look at the U.S. West at, at, from the standpoint of temperature anomalies 
and warmer than normal temperatures and drier than normal conditions on, on most days. And, and I, I monitor these um, these climate re reanalyzer graphs on, on a daily basis. If, and if you if you go to climatereanalyzer.com and you look at global temperature anomalies, you you will really tend to see this much these much warmer than normal conditions across the U.S. West and across ten, tending across the the North American West. And into Alaska, not to say that every day sh shows above normal temperatures, but there does appear to be this tendency where the U.S. West is, is warmer than normal. And, and I, I, I will refer you to the scientific experts just to verify that. But just from the op observational standpoint, this appears to be just a prevalent trend that is ongoing. And, and today we are seeing warmer than normal temperatures across the U.S. West in the range of about five to in some cases 10 degrees Celsius above normal for this time of year. And if you look at all the major climate zones right now, you can see that every major climate zone on the surface of the earth is showing above normal temperatures. And when I say above normal temperatures, we're talking about temperatures based on 30 year climatology. So, so this is a uh, 1979 to 2000 baseline, which is already a warmer than normal baseline. So if you're seeing temperatures that are 5 to 10 degrees Celsius above a 1979 to 2000 baseline, that's a baseline that's already increased already due to human-caused climate change, due to the greenhouse gases, the heat-trapping gases that we are pumping into the Earth's atmosphere, primarily through the mechanism of fossil fuel burning. So just an assessment of the overall conditions which are in, in, contributing to the increasing frequency of dangerous and, and uh, unfortunately tragically deadly wildfires like the Camp Fire, which recently occurred in the U.S. West, a, a fire that, that we cannot divorce from the influences of human-caused climate change. And again, an appeal to all of you, to, to any of you that are within the reach of the sound of my voice, to listen to scientists like Dr. Michael Mann and to, to pay attention to the new National Climate Assessment Report that is coming out today to, to read the news about it. And if you have time, at least read the summary and, and share it with your friends and family because we're, we're all in the same boat together. We're, we are all facing this crisis, this human-caused climate change. And, and we all have a responsibility to, to act in, in whatever way we can to, to make our voices heard and to put our finger on the scales of history and, and try and move ourselves into a position where we, we can better respond to this crisis and, and to help our fellows and to prevent the tragedies that, that we are seeing today. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.